CS61A is not the perfect first computing course for everybody. I would encourage you to stick with it and try it out, see how things are going. But if you discover that things just don't seem to be working for you, you're not enjoying yourself, you're uh, having a hard time keeping up, you uh, don't connect with the material in the first couple of weeks, seriously consider taking an alternative course. And we offer these alternative courses because there isn't just one right answer for everybody. One course you can consider taking instead of 61A or before 61A is called CS10, The Beauty and Joy of Computing. It has a really cute mascot. But there's a lot of depth to this course. It was designed as a course for non-majors, but now we have lots of majors who take it before 61A. And it's an excellent course for people who are just starting out in computing, and they want a course that's designed for people just starting out in computing, where their peers are all starting out with them. The name is great, Beauty and Joy of Computing, but the course is great too. So I ask students who have taken this course, do they love it, and almost uniformly do people say that they enjoyed taking the course and they got a lot out of it. It's designed for students without prior experience, which is not true of 61A. 61A was really designed for people with prior experience, and uh, we've adapted it to make sure that anyone can take it. But it does move at a fast pace that's even quite challenging for people who have programmed before. Um, CS10 uses a programming environment that was created here at Berkeley, but is now used in courses around the world and online. Um, and it's a different kind of programming language because you are constrained to only be able to build programs that make sense together. In 61A, we use text-based languages where you can type whatever you want, but the computer will only accept certain instructions. In um, CS10, you use a language that's built on blocks, and the blocks fit together in order to build up valid programs, which gets rid of some of the frustration of learning how to program. You still work on building interesting projects, including lots of uh, visual and multimedia projects, and you'll get an introduction to fundamentals. You'll even get an introduction to the Python language that we use in 61A. And the course is really there uh, to set students up for success in 61A if they want to go on in computing, or to teach them a foundation for computing that they can just apply to the rest of their lives if they decide that that's enough computing for them. So it's a good course just to take on its own, or it's a good course to take before 61A. This semester, it has a wonderful professor, Dan Garcia, who helped design the course in the first place, and, and you know his students just love him. So you're guaranteed to have a wonderful uh, educational experience if you take CS10 this semester. Uh, there's basically always a great professor for it, but this one's pretty special because it's one of the designers of the course. You can find out more information at cs10.org. If you're interested in perhaps taking that course, I would suggest going to some of the lectures and just checking it out. It's possible to transfer into the course after a few weeks of 61A, but you'll have an easier time doing that if you've kept up with the course a little bit by attending the lectures and learning a little bit of the content. Another course that you should consider that you could take before or after or while taking 61A is called Data Science 8, The Foundations of Data Science. Now, computing can be used to build interesting projects, create interesting programs or it can be used as a tool to understand the world. And that second perspective is what data science is all about. So this course brings together fundamentals of computing and statistical inference and some machine learning in order to understand real-world data sets and make predictions. I did help design this course, and so I'm particularly fond of it. But I think um, it's a really nice set of ideas that you could learn right in your first semester at Berkeley it's a great course to take first. Um, it will teach you some computing, but maybe only about 20 or 25 percent of the computing material that you'll see in 61A. So um, it gives you kind of the most foundational parts of computing, and then it gives you a lot of practice while you're learning statistical techniques and data processing techniques. You get some experience using the computing ideas that you've learned in that course. So if you're looking for something that's just going to build up a foundation of experience and comfort with computing before you take 61A, Data 8 is a good option. And that has fun projects too, but they're more data-oriented or real-world-oriented projects. 
So instead of building games or something like that, uh, you're going to be analyzing data about the real world. This is the water district for um, Berkeley and Oakland and the surrounding area. And one of the projects is, uh, lets you figure out whether uh, people in more affluent areas tend to use more water than other people to see who's using a lot of water in this time of drought in California. So it's great programming practice for 61A. It's cross-listed as CSC8, STATC8, or InfoC8, but those are all the same course. It's taught this fall by a wonderful professor named Ani Adhikari. She's one of the greatest professors on this campus as far as I'm concerned, and so you'll have a delightful educational experience if you take that course too. You can find more info at data8.org.